Have you ever wondered what really pleases God? You might think it requires making grand sacrifices or adhering to a lengthy list of rules to earn his favor. But what if I told you there are simple everyday actions that can deeply touch God's heart? We often underestimate the power of gestures like forgiving someone or showing compassion. These are the true expressions of faith that God values. In this content, we'll explore 14 actions that surprisingly please God more than you might imagine. Get ready to discover how acts of true love, truth and integrity can transform not only your life, but also the way you connect with the divine. So are you ready for this journey of discovery and spiritual growth? Stay with me to learn more, loving your neighbor unconditionally. Love for others is one of the most profound and transformative foundations of Christianity. With his infinite wisdom, Jesus taught us to love not only those who love us, but also our enemies, as written in Matthew 5.44. This type of unconditional and comprehensive love is a reflection of God's love for us. But how can we practice this unconditional love on a daily basis? Imagine showing kindness to a co-worker who tends to be difficult. This is a powerful way to practice love for your neighbor, even in challenging situations. Have you ever tried doing this? The Bible exhorts us to be patient and kind, as stated in 1 Corinthians 13, 4. This means not just tolerating others, but going further by showing empathy and understanding. Think about the last time you had the opportunity to help someone in need. It could have been a small action, like offering a meal to someone hungry. These small gestures are significant in God's eyes, and connect us more deeply to the essence of His love. Do you remember a time when you felt that divine connection by helping someone? Loving your neighbor also involves forgiving and not holding grudges, as indicated in 1 Corinthians 13, 5. Forgiving is liberating for both the forgiver and the forgiven. It's like opening a door to a new journey of peace and healing. However, forgiving is not always easy, especially when the hurt is deep. A helpful practice might be to start with a prayer asking the Holy Spirit for the strength to release these feelings. When was the last time you forgave someone wholeheartedly? This practice of love goes beyond isolated actions. It's a continuous life stance. By loving unconditionally, we become ambassadors of Christ, spreading His love and His message of hope. This is particularly relevant in times of division and conflict, where true love can be a balm for social wounds. Have you ever found yourself needing to be the voice of calm and love amidst chaos? Finally, loving your neighbor is an expression of our faith in action. Jesus said that the greatest commandment is to love God and your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, 37, 39. It's a call to live authentically and genuinely, reflecting Christ's light in all our interactions. Do you feel that you are fulfilling this commandment in your daily life? Leave in the comments how you have been applying unconditional love in your actions and what challenges you have faced on this journey. Generously forgiving. Forgiving is one of the noblest acts we can practice, reflecting God's grace in our lives. Jesus taught us the importance of forgiveness in Matthew 6, 14, 15, highlighting that just as God forgives us, we should also forgive each other. But what does it mean to forgive generously? It's giving up the right to retaliate or to hold grudges even when the pain seems unbearable. Imagine how liberating it would be to let go of the burden of an old grudge. This not only frees us, but also deeply pleases God. Have you ever felt this lightness by forgiving someone? The practice of forgiveness is a continuous exercise in empathy and compassion. When we understand that everyone makes mistakes, it becomes easier to release the other person from their faults. A practical way to start is through prayer, asking God to help us see the person who offended us through the eyes of Christ. This may include praying for the well-being of that person, which often transforms our hearts. How about trying this approach the next time you find it difficult to forgive? Besides being an act of grace, forgiving also benefits us emotionally. 
Holding on to resentments is like carrying an unnecessary burden that can affect our mental and spiritual health. Studies show that the act of forgiving can reduce stress and improve mental health. Therefore, forgiving is a gift we give ourselves, allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. Have you noticed any positive changes in yourself after forgiving someone? Forgiveness is a powerful demonstration of love and understanding. It's not just an act of leaving the past behind, but also a way of embracing the future with hope and renewal. By forgiving, we align with Jesus' teachings and show the world an alternative to vengeance and hatred. This act of generosity is a living testimony of our faith. How about sharing in the comments a story where forgiveness brought transformation in your life or someone else's? Finally, forgiving is a reflection of the unconditional love that God has for us. Jesus teaches us to forgive 70 times 7, which symbolizes unlimited forgiveness, Matthew 18, 22. This challenges us to be generous in our willingness to forgive, even when it is difficult. It's a call to live in peace and harmony, cultivating healthy and uplifting relationships. Are you willing to accept this challenge and let forgiveness transform your life? Practicing humility. Humility is a virtue that is often misunderstood, but is highly valued in the scriptures. Jesus, in his infinite wisdom, taught us that true greatness is found in serving others, as he did when he washed the disciples' feet, John 13, 14, 15. Practicing humility means recognizing that regardless of our achievements, we still depend completely on God. Imagine a leader who, instead of exalting himself, chooses to listen and learn from his team. This is a practical example of humility in action. Have you ever considered how this attitude could transform your work environment or your community? Being humble also means putting the needs of others ahead of our own, as advised in Philippians 2, 3. This doesn't mean we should negate ourselves, but rather consider the well-being of others as a priority. In everyday life, this can be as simple as giving way to another person in a queue or giving up your seat on public transportation. Small gestures like these may seem insignificant, but make a big difference in the testimony of a Christian life. Have you recently practiced any act of humility that you'd like to share? Humility is also a protection against pride, which the Bible describes as a dangerous trap. Pride makes us believe we are self-sufficient and drives us away from God. On the other hand, humility keeps us open to learn and grow, recognizing our limitations and the need for divine guidance. A classic example is the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, where the tax collector in his humility is justified by God, Luke 18, 9, 14. Have you experienced the transformative power of admitting your faults before God and others? Moreover, humility strengthens our interpersonal relationships. Humble people are more approachable and willing to listen, which facilitates conflict resolution and promotes peace. In the family context, for example, Admitting mistakes and asking for forgiveness is an expression of humility that can restore relationships. Imagine the positive impact of a parent who, instead of imposing, chooses to listen and consider the opinions of their children. Have you ever been in a situation where humility helped resolve a conflict? Finally, practicing humility is an invitation to follow Christ's example, who, although he was God, chose to serve and give his life for us. Philippians 2, 5, 8. It's a call to live in a way that reflects God's grace and compassion, recognizing that everything we have is a divine gift. Practicing humility is therefore a form of worship to God, demonstrating our dependence on him. Do you consider yourself a humble person? How can humility be applied more intentionally in your life? Serving the needy. Serving the needy is a tangible expression of God's love in action. The Bible guides us to care for orphans, widows, and the afflicted as a form of true religion. James 1.27 This service is not just an obligation, but an opportunity to show the character of Christ to the world. 
Imagine participating in a food drive for homeless people. This is a practical example of how we can demonstrate God's love through our actions. Have you ever participated in a social action that deeply moved you? The practice of serving the needy also reminds us of the importance of humility and empathy. When we put ourselves in the shoes of others, we better understand their struggles and challenges. This motivates us to act with compassion and do something about it. For instance, when visiting a nursing home, we can offer not just material goods, but also time and companionship, which are often more valuable. Have you considered how small actions can have a big impact on someone's life? Moreover, serving others is a form of worship and a reflection of our faith. Jesus said that by serving the less fortunate, we are serving him. Matthew 25, 40. This challenges us to see the face of Christ in each person we meet, especially the most vulnerable. This perspective transforms our service into an expression of gratitude and devotion. How about planning a volunteer action with your community or church? It could be an excellent way to experience this truth. Serving also molds and transforms us, leading to a life of greater compassion and altruism. By helping others, we learn to value more what we have and to be more grateful. This personal growth is one of the less talked about but very powerful benefits of service. A practical example is working in animal shelters where we can help care for the animals and at the same time develop a sense of responsibility and empathy. Have you considered how serving others can be a tool for personal growth? Finally, serving the needy is a call to live according to Jesus' teachings, who came to serve and not to be served. Mark 10, 45. It's a way to connect more deeply with God's heart and to express our faith in practical ways. When we serve, we are the hands and feet of Christ in the world. Are you willing to accept this call and make a difference in someone's life? Share in the comments an experience of service that had a significant impact on your life. Seeking justice. Seeking justice is a fundamental aspect of Christian faith, reflecting God's heart, which is just and upright in all his ways. Psalm 89, 14. This goes beyond mere observance of human laws. It's a call to fight for equity and defend the oppressed. Imagine yourself as a human rights advocate standing up against injustice in your community. This is a clear example of how we can be instruments of justice. Have you thought about how you can contribute to a more just world? Biblical justice is not limited to the courts, but extends to all areas of life. It involves treating all people with dignity and respect, regardless of their social status, race or creed. At home, this can translate into creating an environment where everyone feels valued and respected. In business, it means being honest and fair in all transactions, not exploiting or deceiving. How do you practice justice in your daily life? Besides being a moral principle, seeking justice is also an act of love for your neighbor. When we fight for justice, we are demonstrating care and compassion for others, especially the marginalized. This is evident in the actions of historical figures like Martin Luther King Jr., who fought against racial discrimination, inspiring millions to seek equal treatment for all. Have you ever been involved in a social cause that seeks justice? What was that experience like? Justice is also a recurring theme in the prophets of the Old Testament, who often exhorted God's people to act justly and be a light to the nations. These teachings are applicable today, encouraging us to be examples of integrity and uprightness in our communities. This can include everything from denouncing unfair practices to supporting initiatives that promote equity. Do you know of any local initiatives that fight for justice where you could get involved? Finally, seeking justice is a way to manifest the kingdom of God on earth. It's a call to be active, not passive, in the face of the world's injustices. As Christians, we are called to be agents of change, bringing light to areas of darkness. This can start with small actions like educating oneself about social issues or participating in mentoring programs. Are you willing to become an advocate for justice and do your part to make the world a better place? Leave in the comments your ideas or actions you would like to implement. 
Being grateful in all circumstances, gratitude is a powerful virtue that transforms our perspective and brings us closer to God. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, we are instructed to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for us. This doesn't mean ignoring difficulties, but rather recognizing that in any situation, there is always something to be thankful for. Imagine starting the day by listing three things you are grateful for. This simple practice can change the course of your day and help cultivate a positive attitude. Have you ever tried this? Expressing gratitude is more than a matter of courtesy. It's an act of faith. When we are grateful, we are acknowledging the sovereignty and goodness of God even in difficult times. Gratitude allows us to see beyond the challenges and recognize the hidden blessings. A practical example is being thankful for health even when we face problems because many do not have the same blessing. Have you ever found a blessing amid a difficulty? Share in the comments how it affected you. The practice of gratitude also has proven effects on our mental health and well-being. Studies show that grateful people tend to be happier and less prone to depression. This is because gratitude helps us focus on the positive and appreciate the small joys of life. A good exercise is to keep a gratitude journal where you jot down at least three things you are grateful for daily. How about starting today? How do you think this can impact your life? Moreover, gratitude is a form of worship. By thanking God for his blessings, we are recognizing his hand in our lives and reaffirming our trust in him. This is especially important in moments of doubt or discouragement. By expressing gratitude, we put ourselves in a position of humility, recognizing that everything we have is a gift from God. Have you tried making a gratitude prayer before going to sleep? This can be a powerful way to end the day. Finally, being grateful in all circumstances is a continuous exercise that requires practice and discipline. It's a daily choice to focus on what is good even when the world around us seems to be falling apart. This helps us develop a more resilient perspective and trust that God is in control. Are you willing to incorporate more gratitude into your life? Leave in the comments how you plan to practice gratitude going forward. Maintaining purity of heart. Maintaining purity of heart is a divine call to live with integrity and sincerity in both thoughts and actions. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 8, that the pure in heart will see God, highlighting the importance of this quality in our spiritual journey. Purity of heart is like an internal compass that guides us away from sin and towards holiness. Imagine filtering your thoughts and actions to ensure they are aligned with Christ's teachings. This may seem challenging, but it's a path that brings us closer to God. Have you ever paused to reflect on the state of your heart? Cultivating purity of heart involves being mindful of what we allow into our minds and hearts. The Bible instructs us to guard our hearts because from them flow the springs of life. Proverbs 4.23 This means being selective about what we watch, listen to, and read, always seeking what is pure and uplifting. A practical example might be choosing movies and books that inspire positive values. Have you thought about doing a cleanup of your entertainment list to ensure it reflects your faith? Purity of heart also manifests in our relationships with others. It means acting with honesty and transparency, without ulterior motives or hypocrisy. It's important to be truthful in all situations, even if it means admitting mistakes or vulnerabilities. In the workplace, for example, this might mean being honest about your capabilities and limitations, avoiding promises you can't keep. How have you demonstrated purity of heart in your daily interactions? Maintaining a pure heart is also an ongoing process of self-awareness and repentance. We are all imperfect and can sometimes stray from the right path. However, the Bible offers us the consolation of forgiveness and restoration through sincere repentance. It's important to recognize our mistakes and seek purification through prayer and meditation on God's Word. How about dedicating time to reflect and pray, asking God to reveal areas of your heart that need purification? Finally, purity of heart is an expression of our commitment to God and His ways. 
It's not just about avoiding sin, but seeking a life that reflects God's holiness. This leads us to a life of integrity, where our actions and words are consistent with our values. Are you willing to seek this purity of heart? How can you start practicing it today? Leave in the comments your reflections on how to maintain a pure heart in a world full of distractions. Cultivating patience. Patience is an essential virtue that helps us face life's challenges with serenity and trust in God. In Galatians 5.22, patience is mentioned as a fruit of the Spirit, underscoring its importance in Christian life. Being patient means waiting calmly for God's timing without murmuring or discouragement. Imagine being stuck in a traffic jam and choosing to use that time to pray or reflect on your blessings instead of getting irritated. This is a small but powerful practice of patience. Have you ever tried applying patience in everyday situations? Patience is especially vital during trials and difficulties. These moments are opportunities to trust in God's wisdom and strengthen our faith. A practical example is when we are waiting for an answer to an important prayer, such as healing from an illness or a solution to a financial problem. During these times, it's crucial to maintain hope and confidence, knowing that God is working behind the scenes. How do you handle waiting in your life? Do you feel challenged to be more patient? Being patient with others is an extension of our patience with situations. The people around us, just like us, have their flaws and limitations. Exercising patience in our relationships can improve communication and promote peace. In the workplace, for example, being patient with a colleague who is learning something new can create a more collaborative and less stressful environment. Have you ever found yourself being impatient with someone? How can you work to change that? Patience is also a form of love and compassion. When we are patient, we show others that we value and respect their journeys and processes. This is particularly relevant in family relationships where differences and conflicts contest our patience. An example is when parents need to deal with the rebellious behavior of a teenage child. Practicing patience in these moments can strengthen bonds and help build a more solid and loving relationship. How has patience impacted your personal relationships? Finally, cultivating patience is an ongoing process that requires practice and dependence on God. As we seek to be more patient, we are shaped to become more like Christ, who is the ultimate example of patience. He endured the cross with patience and love, giving us the perfect example to follow. Are you willing to cultivate more patience in your life? How do you plan to start this journey? Leave in the comments your strategies for being more patient in difficult situations. Promoting peace. Promoting peace is one of the noblest and most necessary missions we can undertake as followers of Christ. Jesus calls us to be peacemakers, stating that those who promote peace will be called children of God. Matthew 5, 9. Being a peacemaker goes beyond avoiding conflicts. It's an active effort to create harmony and reconciliation wherever we are. Imagine a situation where two friends are fighting and you act as a mediator, helping them understand each other. This is a practical example of how to promote peace. Have you ever had the opportunity to be a peacemaker? Peace begins within us and expands to the world around us. Having inner peace is essential to be able to promote external peace. This involves trusting in God and seeking His guidance in all things. In moments of stress or worry, we can turn to prayer and meditation on God's Word to find this inner peace. For example, reading Psalm 46.10, which reminds us to be still and know that I am God, can be a source of comfort. How do you find inner peace in times of turbulence? Promoting peace also means being an agent of reconciliation in our relationships. Often this involves forgiveness and the willingness to let go of pride to restore harmony. In the workplace, for example, it might mean resolving misunderstandings fairly and equitably. At home, it could mean being the first to apologize in a marital conflict. Being a peacemaker is not easy, but it's a powerful expression of God's love. Have you ever needed to promote peace in a difficult situation? Moreover, as Christians, 
We are called to be a light in a world often marked by divisions and conflicts. This includes not only avoiding gossip and slander, but also being an example of integrity and justice. Participating in community projects that promote unity and understanding is a way to live out this calling. Imagine the positive impact that a united community can have on people's lives. How can you contribute to promoting peace in your community? Finally, promoting peace is a manifestation of the kingdom of God here on earth. Each time we choose peace over conflict, we are bringing a little more of God's kingdom into our world. This is something that deeply pleases God and reflects his desire for love and reconciliation for all. Are you willing to become an agent of peace in your daily life? Leave in the comments your ideas on how we can work together to promote peace in the world. Living with integrity. Living with integrity is essential for those who wish to follow God's paths in an authentic and faithful manner. Integrity involves being honest and consistent in all areas of life, regardless of who is watching. Proverbs 10. 9 says that whoever walks in integrity walks securely highlighting the security that comes from a life lived according to God's principles. Imagine being in a situation where you could lie to benefit yourself, but choose the truth instead. This is a practical example of integrity. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you had to choose between integrity and ease? Integrity is not just about being honest, but also about living according to the values we profess. This means that our actions should reflect our beliefs, both in public and in private. An example is maintaining ethics at work even when no one is looking or being faithful to commitments made. This creates a reputation of trust and respect both with the people around us and with God. How have you demonstrated integrity in your daily life? Moreover, living with integrity is a powerful testimony of our faith. People are attracted to those who are consistent and genuine because these attributes are rare in a world where many prefer shortcuts. This doesn't mean we are perfect, but that we strive to live according to Christ's principles, even in difficult situations. For example, being honest about our mistakes and apologizing when necessary is a demonstration of integrity. Have you had to apologize and admit a mistake recently? Integrity also involves transparency and sincerity. It's not just about avoiding lies, but being truthful in all our communications and relationships. This includes speaking the truth with love and respect, even when it's difficult. In personal relationships, this might mean being honest about our feelings and expectations, avoiding misunderstandings, and building a solid foundation of trust. How do you practice transparency in your relationships? Finally, living with integrity is a continuous journey of spiritual growth and development. It's a daily choice to follow God's paths, even when it's challenging. Integrity is a reflection of our dedication to living a life that pleases God, showing the world what it means to be a follower of Christ. Are you committed to living with integrity? Leave in the comments your reflections on how integrity can positively impact your life and the lives of those around you. Demonstrating compassion. Demonstrating compassion is more than a feeling. It's an action that reflects the loving heart of God. Jesus frequently showed compassion to the crowds, healing the sick and comforting the afflicted. Matthew 9, 36. Compassion leads us to act on behalf of those who suffer offering help and support where it's needed. Imagine extending a hand to a co-worker who is going through personal difficulties, offering a listening ear or a word of encouragement. This is a concrete way to demonstrate compassion. Have you recently had the opportunity to show compassion? Compassion also involves empathy, which is the ability to put oneself in another's shoes and feel what they are feeling. This helps us respond with sensitivity and care instead of judgment or indifference. A practical example is visiting someone who is hospitalized, bringing comfort and hope through your presence. This action may seem simple, but it can make a huge difference to someone suffering. How can you practice more empathy in your daily interactions? Moreover, the Bible encourages us to clothe ourselves with compassion as part of our new nature in Christ. Colossians 3.12 
This means that compassion should be a constant characteristic in our lives, not just an occasional response. In family relationships, for example, being compassionate might mean being willing to forgive and give a second chance. In a social context, it might mean engaging in volunteer activities that benefit the less fortunate. Have you considered how you can be more actively involved in helping those in need? Compassion is also a form of Christian witness. When we demonstrate compassion, we are showing the world God's love in action. It's a powerful way to share our faith, not just with words, but with deeds. Participating in missions or helping in relief initiatives is an excellent way to demonstrate this compassion tangibly. Have you participated in any mission or volunteer activity that deeply impacted you? Finally, compassion is an expression of the kingdom of God. It's a call to love others as Christ loved us, sacrificing ourselves for the good of others. By demonstrating compassion, we become instruments of peace and hope in a world often marked by pain and suffering. Are you willing to live a life of compassion? Leave in the comments your ideas on how we can be more compassionate in our day-to-day -day lives and how this can transform our communities. Having faith and trust in God. Having faith and trust in God is the foundation of Christian life. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, as we are reminded in Hebrews 11:6. Faith is believing in what we cannot see and trusting that God is in control, even when circumstances are challenging. It's like trusting that even in the middle of a storm, the pilot has control of the plane. A practical example of this is praying with confidence, knowing that God hears and responds to our prayers according to His will. Have you ever had an experience where your faith was tested and you still chose to trust in God? Trusting in God is essential in times of uncertainty. When we face challenges like a financial crisis or a health issue, it's easy to get carried away by anxiety. However, the Bible encourages us to cast all our anxieties on Him because He cares for us. 1 Peter 5, 7. This means handing over our worries to God, believing that He is working for our good. A useful exercise is to write down your worries and pray about them, asking God to give you peace and wisdom. How do you handle your daily concerns? Moreover, faith calls us to act even when we don't see the complete path ahead. It's like taking the first step on a foggy bridge, trusting that the structure is there to support us. This might mean following a call or making a decision based on God's direction, even if it seems risky. An example is changing careers to follow a passion or vocation that you feel God has placed in your heart. Have you taken a step of faith in any area of your life? Trust in God also manifests in our obedience to His commands. We believe that His ways are better and that He has a plan for our lives, even when we don't fully understand. This can be particularly challenging when His instructions go against our desires or human logic. However, true faith is demonstrated when we follow God's will, even amidst doubt. How have you demonstrated obedience in your spiritual life? Finally, living with faith and trust in God is an ongoing journey of spiritual growth. It's a daily choice to trust Him, regardless of the circumstances. Faith is not a guarantee of a problem-free life, but the assurance that God is with us in all situations. Are you willing to trust God more and strengthen your faith? Leave in the comments your reflections on how you can grow in faith and trust in God, even in the storms of life. Living in fellowship with other believers. Living in fellowship with other believers is a fundamental part of spiritual growth and Christian life. The Bible exhorts us not to forsake assembling together, as some are in the habit of doing, but to encourage one another. Hebrews 10:25. Fellowship is a space of support where we can share our joys and challenges, pray for each other, and grow together in faith. Imagine participating in a Bible study group or a prayer cell. These are valuable moments for building relationships and strengthening your walk with God. Have you experienced the power of Christian fellowship? 
Fellowship goes beyond formal meetings and worship services. It's a shared life. It involves being present in each other's lives, celebrating achievements and offering support in difficult times. This can range from a simple message of encouragement to practical help, like preparing a meal for someone going through a tough time. These actions create a sense of community and belonging. How have you been cultivating fellowship with other believers in your life? Moreover, living in fellowship provides us with a network of spiritual accountability. Having people with whom we can be honest about our struggles and victories helps us keep our focus on Christ and grow in holiness. A practical example is having a prayer partner with whom you can share your struggles and pray together. This creates an environment of trust and mutual support. Do you have someone with whom you can share your spiritual struggles and pray together? Fellowship is also a form of witness to the world. Jesus said the world would know we are his disciples by the love we have for one another. John 13, 35. When we live in unity and love, we show the world the nature of the kingdom of God. This is especially powerful in times of division and conflict. How have you been demonstrating Christian love in your interactions with other believers and with the community at large? Finally, fellowship with other believers is a vital practice for a healthy Christian life. It's an opportunity to grow, learn and serve together, strengthening our faith and building up the body of Christ. Are you willing to invest more time and energy in your faith community? Leave in the comments your ideas on how we can improve fellowship among believers and how this can enrich our spiritual lives. Commitment to the truth. Commitment to the truth is a distinctive mark of Christian character. Jesus declared that he is the way, the truth and the life. John 14, 6. And as his followers, we are called to live in an integral and truthful manner. Living in truth means being honest, transparent and faithful in all circumstances. Imagine being in a situation where it's tempting to exaggerate or distort the truth for personal gain, but choosing to be completely honest instead. This choice is a reflection of a deep commitment to the truth. Have you ever encountered situations where you were challenged to maintain your honesty? The truth is essential in all areas of life, including our personal and professional relationships. Being truthful builds trust and strengthens relationships, while lying and falsehood erode these bonds. In the workplace, for example, being transparent about expectations and limits can prevent misunderstandings and promote a culture of trust. Similarly, in our homes, being honest about our emotions and intentions helps build a solid foundation of communication and respect. How have you been applying the commitment to the truth in your relationships? Beyond being a moral quality, the truth is liberating. Jesus said that knowing the truth would set us free, John 8, 32. This means that living in truth frees us from the lies and deceptions that can bind us. The truth helps us see things as they really are and make wise decisions. A practical example is being honest with oneself about limitations and weaknesses which can open doors for personal and spiritual growth. Have you experienced the freedom that comes from living in truth? The commitment to the truth also implies defending the truth, even when it's difficult or unpopular. This might mean speaking out against injustices or correcting false information, even when it may cause discomfort. Being an advocate for the truth is an expression of our loyalty to God and His principles. However, this should be done with love and grace, always seeking the well-being of others. How can you be an advocate for the truth in your community? Finally, living with a commitment to the truth is a powerful testimony of our faith. It's a declaration that we value integrity and honesty, reflecting God's character in our lives. This commitment helps us live consistently and be light in a world often marked by misinformation and deceit. Are you ready to fully embrace the commitment to the truth in your daily life? Leave in the comments your reflections on how the truth can positively impact your interactions and decisions. Throughout this content, 
we explored 14 actions that can deeply please God and transform your life. Each of these practices, whether it's generously forgiving, living with integrity or demonstrating compassion, is a step towards a life more aligned with divine principles. Now it's time to put this knowledge into practice. How can you incorporate these actions into your daily life? Maybe start by forgiving that person you've been holding a grudge against or taking an honest action you've been postponing. Remember, change starts with small actions. Are you ready to apply these principles and see how they can impact your life and the lives of those around you? Leave your responses in the comments below. We want to know how you plan to live these truths. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate notifications to continue receiving inspiring content that can help strengthen your faith and your spiritual journey. Together, we can grow and become more like Christ day by day. Let's go.